In this presentation, we will talk about payroll controls and documentation. Exempt and non-exempt employees. It's important to know these terms because the regulations will differ depending on whether an employee qualifies as exempt or non-exempt. So in other words, the employees that are exempt are not subject to the Fair Labor Standards Act FLSA wage and hours laws. So amongst other th things, in particular, the overtime calculation would not be present or uh, not be needed or required for employers given the employees who are exempt. So if they're exempt from that status, then uh, they aren't required to have, amongst other things, an overtime calculation uh, based on the, the federal law, the Fair Labor and Standards Act. Now, why would that be the case? Well, if someone is, is exempt, then typically we're dealing with highly skilled workers, managers, executives, uh, individuals who we would, we would assume have their own basic negotiation abilities whereas the overtime calculation is typically there in order to, uh, or one reason it would be there is in order to make sure that uh, advantage isn't taken of workers who do not have a lot of other options and therefore um, would have less choice in being able to or required to work long hours without uh, added compensation. So exempt workers then would be workers that would typically be salaried employees. So we typically think of the higher level employees, the managers, the, the highly skilled workers, to be uh, salary based, whereas the non-exempt workers were typically thinking of workers that would often be uh, hourly based. Now it's not uh, required, that may not be the, the necessary distinction. And there are some uh, instances where uh, someone has a salary based, where we'd still wanna calculate their hourly rate because we need to calculate overtime. But as a general rule and the rule we will typically follow here, if someone is a more highly skilled or an executive, then they would probably be exempt and they would have a salary income. If someone is needing to be calculating overtime on and required to calculate overtime and is not exempt, then that would typically be an hourly worker. Some other differentiations is the exempt worker is typically going to have a college degree or possibly be more educated, possibly have more uh, say or, or ability to make judgment calls within their uh, employment, within their profession, within their job. Payroll records that the employee needs to receive. These are going to be records that the employer is required to receive from the employer. That's going to be a copy of the time card and a copy of the pay stub. So these are going to be items that the employee needs to be uh, provided with. When we talk about the pay stub, note that we could get paid uh, with, with a check, a physical check, or electronically. In either case, the pay stub will typically have uh, information more than just would be on any type of paycheck or any normal type of check stub, including the, uh, usually it'll have the net pay, the gross pay for the time period, and it'll have the deductions that were withheld so that the employee can get all the information of their, of, uh, their time there. They can see how much did they earn gross, how much was taken out, what was it taken out for, and the net check that they are actually receiving. They also typically will have on the pay stub uh, that information in terms of the year to date number as well as just the number for this particular pay period. When considering payroll internal controls, we know that they will differ from company to company. We'll have more internal controls as companies grow because we'll need more controls in order to safeguard the payroll process, a process that can be subject uh, to fraud. One of the major internal controls we always wanna think of whenever thinking of internal controls is the separation of duties. We wanna have some separation of duties so that uh, if, if there is some type of fraud taking place, that it should be more likely to be caught if the payroll process has a separation of duties, not one individual who is in charge of the full payroll process. We also wanna make sure that there's documentation and verif verification of employee duties, and that's gonna assign responsibility to the employees. We wanna make sure that we can hold individuals accountable by well-defining their task and then having them uh, sign off on the task so that we can see and verify the tasks have one happened and two who who is responsible for those particular tasks those should be uh, documented common errors that a good system of controls can prevent are going to be things like continued payment for for terminated employees or even a system where employees that uh, are no longer there were fraudulently still getting a paycheck and possibly being deposited in a, in a similar 
uh, named type of account. Uh, if there's a separation in terms of the entering of the payroll data and the distribution in some way of, of the pay uh, checks, then that may be a way to, to help to find out these problems. Meaning if we don't, if we have a, some type of verification in the distribution process of the payroll, as well as the entering of the payroll and the data input side, as well as stolen paychecks, stolen prior to distribution. So these are gonna be just a, a couple things that we wanna be able to safeguard against. And again, some problems could happen with payroll in that payroll being processed for uh, employees that don't exist or prior employees possibly being deposited into bank accounts with similar names. Those are types of fraud that could take place as well as just errors with the, the payroll, never um, removing someone from the payroll records even after they have been uh, terminated. Payroll documentation and retention. When considering the payroll documentation, we really want to make sure that we're holding on to the payroll documentation for a good while, probably longer than many other types of documentation because uh, we want to make sure that if anything happens later on in terms of payroll, we have that documentation. It is very possible for uh, something to happen uh, in the future and us to have to look into the payroll documents. It's also something that has a bit more complexity given the fact that we are withholding information and paying various sources on behalf of the employees. We want to make sure that we are in compliance with that obligation because if we're not, then we have a problem not just with not paying payroll taxes, but with uh, possibly being charged with uh, taking money from the employees and not paying their responsibilities like we basically are required to do. So we, run, we want to be very careful with the payroll tax records. Now the taxes basically mandate a seven year recommendation, which a statute, statute of limitations for many other types of documents is like three years, possibly five years. So seven years is an extended period of time it might be recommended to even hold payroll documents uh, longer than that. And if there's a case of fraud, you, we should note that uh, the IRS would uh, require documentation basically indefinitely at that time. So we definitely want to make sure that we're retaining the payroll records in a secure way for a good time so that we can safeguard against any problems in the future. When disposing of payroll records, we want to make sure we do it in a safe way, in a secure way, and typically that would include shredding or uh, incinerating the payroll records to make sure that they don't, uh, someone doesn't get a hold of sensitive payroll information, including social security numbers and other sensitive data that can be used uh, against employees or in a harmful way. If we have the information in a database program, we want to make sure that uh, once we uh, get rid of the information that we have purged the database, and completely uh, gotten rid of the information so once again we can be certain that that sensitive information is not being uh, taken uh, by or stolen. Did very productive. Payroll paid off. Goodbye.